Okay, so after AlexNet, a uh, literal race broke loose to beat the next challenge. Who can make the next best, better AlexNet to be even better on an image recognition task? Now, one group in Oxford was uh, particularly successful with this, and they built the VGG network. So VGG, um, VGG is, is really... Uh, a big network which you probably use a lot as your backbone feature extractor. Uh, so in, in practice this is still quite common uh, if you just need a feature extractor and it's bas basically looking like, like AlexNet. So the next step in the evolution of design came from, from this VGG architecture. V VGG itself it stands for Visual Geometry Group which is the research group in Oxford who developed this and will obviously beat the next challenge in the following year after AlexNet. So they apparently read the AlexNet paper and learned that apparently bigger is better and so they decided to go even bigger. Um, so let, let's look at how this looks in detail. So if you compare this to AlexNet and probably even Lonet, to, to make it bigger, you can add, well, on the, on the one hand, you could add more dense layers. Well, maybe that's not such a good idea because dense layers are very expensive to compute. And as you, as you know from the previous lectures, the matrices get really, really big and you also get uh, quite a memory footprint for a lot of dense layers. Well, maybe you could add more convolutions as an alternative, and, and this is exactly what they did. You, you can do this, but, but at some point you're probably also starting to get tired of having to define every single convolution in, in your network architecture as we did it previously, if you remember the PyTorch examples. So probably you want to group them into blocks. So once you go to 20, 30, 40 layers, then uh, it gets quite quickly, quite annoying to have to specify all of these by hand. So, so the key innovation in VGG is, is actually uh, this grouping. So we group layers now into blocks, which then turn into parameterizable repeated blocks that we can use for learning tasks, right? The entire block, so convolutions and poolings uh, get learnable in the same way as we learned uh, individual layers earlier. So if you look at the VGG blocks, the first thing um, the, the authors of this paper actually had to solve is whether you should use fewer wide convolutions or more narrow ones. If you remember back, AlexNet had quite wide convolutions up to 13 by 13 uh, uh, kernel sizes. Now, now this was unknown at this point, so they had to basically try it out and see which uh, which yields the better results. And and the paper by Simonian and and Sisserman really did a, a good comprehensive analysis, and and they showed that in fact more layers of narrow convolutions were more powerful than a smaller number of wide convolutions. This, this tends to be a trend actually overall in, uh, in the machine learning community and, um, and it, it seems like that a larger number of compositions of very simple functions turn out to be more expressive and, and more able to fit meaningful models than a small number of, of shallower and more complicated functions. So effectively the VGG block has a bunch of 3 by 3 convolutions and if you padded them by one it didn't change the size actually of the input relative to the output and then in the end you have max pooling of 2 by 2 with a stride of 2 which, which halves the resolution essentially. Now, if you stack several of those things together and, and combine it with the same dense layers as we had, for example, in AlexNet at the end, then what you get is a VGG network. 
And, and in fact, you get an entire family of networks that way, just dependent on how many of these blocks you combine. So you might have heard a few of these architectures, but what you find in practice is something like a VGG 16, VGG 19 architecture, for example, this number just denotes the number of blocks you use to assemb assemble your feature extractor before it goes to the classification part. So if you think about the overall progress so far, it basically boils down to bigger and deeper. Now, if you, if you think back in Learnet about 95, you had two convolutions and some pooling layers uh, and two hidden dense layers. AlexNet was a bigger and deeper Learnet effectively with Railos dropout pre-processing. And the VGG is now a bigger and deeper AlexNet we repeat the VGG blocks and do the same thing as AlexNet did. Now remember one thing that wouldn't have been possible in 95 without the power of GPUs, which haven't been available back then. So the credit goes to both to the researchers who made it possible to, um, to think about these kind of network architectures and to implement them for general purpose uh, vector processes like GPUs but also to the GPU manufacturers who made their vector processors programmable in a way so that this could be achieved. Now there are nice visualizations uh, about throughput versus accuracy of several network architectures. So this, this just combines all the network architectures which are, which are kind of common and which you can download in your uh, deep learning libraries like PyTorch, for example, or MXNet. This particular graphic is from MXNet from the Gluon repository. And it shows quite nicely um, the complexity of the network. So AlexNet is, is, is way down here at the, at the bottom, um, way down here. And so, so it's relatively lightweight but also has relatively low accuracy. And then the VGG family came in and all of these are the VGGs. So the size of the dot also shows the memory footprint and, and they are quite massive. They are quite big, they have bigger accuracy and, um, uh, and perform better on the competitions. And as we see, we'll see uh, in, in later videos, people then moved away again from these massive models uh, to smaller models, but more accurate ones. Now, in practice, that's since the blocks get more and more and the level of abstraction gets more and more in PyTorch, the VGG is implemented like this. So we, we have our VGG implementation. And this comes directly from the PyTorch repository. So you can look at the entire file uh, in the Torch Vision repository. But, but really what, what, what we can see here is that we have a feature extractor layer, which is an abstraction of our VGG blocks here, and then the pretty much standard AlexNet uh, classification dense layers. Now, if you follow that VGG down, so here I've just picked one example. This is a VGG 16. Uh, it, it looks up these in a, uh, in a dictionary to find how many of the layers it has to actually produce. Produces these layers, so and apparently this is kind of easier to program than if you would now uh, define 16 times two convolutions plus the pooling layers and so on. This is just uh, better readable uh, effectively. But but that's also the key contribution of VGG to make, um, to introduce probably an abstraction layer into, um, into deep convolutional neural networks. So wh what do we learn from that, from AlexNet, from VGG? Well, apparently bigger and deeper used to be the way to go for a while. If you wanted to beat a challenge, then you probably acquired a few more GPUs, got your network bigger, and that was kind of a guarantee to get better performance on a classification task. Now, the, the other thing, the other contribution, which is a bit more hidden in the VGC network, is they were really the first one who figured out that smaller and more convolutions are better than wider and larger convolutions to extract good features. 
and I would recommend you to probably only train very, very small versions of that on small data sets uh, without a GPU. Usually networks of that size, you would train on one to several GPUs or TPUs, tensor processor units as Google uses them.